Right. Um, good afternoon and good day to everyone. Uh, I'm Captain Gaurav Rana and welcome to the webinar on uh, MSC International Shipping and Logistics and I'm MSC International Maritime Business from Solent University. Um, I've got uh, presenters from the university. I've got uh, Nicola, I've got uh, Kunal, um, I've got Jilam and uh, colleagues from CN Beyond. And, and of course, all the participants. Uh, thank you for every one of you for being for taking out time and uh, attending this webinar. Um, this meeting is being recorded and we will also upload the video on YouTube. And we are also doing a live stream on our Facebook channel as well. We've got about eight, 9,000 persons who are uh, following us. So, so yeah, um, we will we'll start the webinar uh, now. Tejal, if you can move to the next slide. All right. Um, contents, uh, how, how do we plan this webinar? Uh, we'll uh, have an introduction of the presenters, introduction about the college, the campus, uh, the facilities. Uh, then we'll have an introduction and uh, uh, details about the course which we are uh, offering. Um, we'll uh, uh, we have a uh, alum Jilam, and we'll hear from her as well. And then we will take the Q and A's. Um, uh, is that uh, uh, any questions that you would have after a slide, you please put it on the chat window. Um, we can take it later on. We will not take questions after each slide. So. Is it, any and every question which comes into your mind, you may please put it on the chat window and we will surely take it at the end, please. Uh, moving on, uh, Tejal. Um, why we are doing this webinar? Essentially, a lot of times when we want to plan uh, about a course, about upgradation, about anything, um, we typically try to find out people who would be able to provide us up some information. Um, and very seldom we are able to find the course leaders, uh, the alums, and specifically all of them at the same place. So what we are trying to do, see and beyond through this webinar is to increase your awareness, uh, consolidate the information uh, um, and pass it on to you so that you can evaluate the relevance of it and you can take a well-informed decision, right? Um, as I've already said that you can submit the questions at any time in the chat window, but we will take the questions at the end itself. And we will also share the slides uh, at the end of the webinar. Um, we will move to the next slide, please, Tejal. Uh, okay. Um, so we've got Kunal over here. Kunal is a deputy director and head of maritime professional courses at Solent. Uh, he's himself a uh, ex-mariner. Um, he's uh, studied also in Solent and uh, he's also part of various uh, committees, uh, which essentially uh, provide opinion through which various rules and regulations are possibly formed as well, um, right? And Kunal over here is going to explain uh, about the university um, uh, and then he'll pass it on to Nicola, who is the course leader of this uh, uh, of this uh, course. Um, over to you, Kunal. And uh, Tejal, if you can see, if you can have the poll question, please, because I'm not able to take the poll from my uh, computer for, for whatever reason. Yes, sir. I will try that. Okay, so I'm launching. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Launch okay. the poll. Have you launched the poll? Yes. Yeah, so can we see? Is it visible? Yeah, we can see it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Over to you, Kunal. While we have the candidates, the participants answer the poll. Uh, yeah, thanks, Gaurav. I'll just let the poll to end and Okay. 
point as as we wait for the poll to to end uh, i can just say, just share the results oh, the results are on everybody can see us that's very good and various places that you have heard about us from Uh, yeah, as Gaurav said, my name is Kunal Anand. Uh, I'm deputy director for Over Slash My Time School, uh, and I'm uh, the head of these courses that we are going to be talking about today. Uh, and as uh, Gaurav also pointed out, I'm ex here, like many of you here, uh, and ex student of uh, of Wasash as well. Did my chief mates master's courses there, as well as. Uh, a similar MSc, which was being offered about 17 years ago now. Um, so uh, I'm going to talk to you about uh, Solity University uh, and Southampton in general, and then uh, hand over to Nicola to talk about more about the university as well as mainly about the course and its content and, and why you should be choosing this course. Next slide, please. All right, this this is this is a great picture. Uh, I I quite like it, uh, and so does our director uh, Lars. Can we just stay on that slide, please? No, we're going forward. Go back. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, and, and now actually this is probably our VC's favorite slide as well because we used it. Um, so th this is this is great because so you can see pretty much this is the Southampton city center as well as uh, part of the port of Southampton, uh, the eastern part of the port of Southampton, the western part, the container terminal and the, the car terminal is to the right, which you can't see here, but right towards the, the base end uh, is what you call this, the Southampton water. Uh, just on the edge on the left, you can see the Southampton Football Club, uh, which was in the Premier League uh, up till about a few days ago. And the mainly is, is the campus. Uh, <clears throat> uh, you can see in red various, uh, the main campus uh, right in the middle. Uh, next to a lot of green spaces and 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 the student halls of residence is about no more than 10 to 15 minutes walk away uh, from the campus and it tells you uh, it tells you lots of things this picture it tells you uh, about south southampton and its maritime heritage and and ports uh, city center green areas and and the campus being in the heart of city center as well so uh, a very nice representation of uh, where we are. Next slide, please. Right, so Southampton, um, again, <clears throat> I'm biased because uh, I have lived here quite a long time. But yeah, uh, very, it, it is a, a very thriving city, largest city uh, in the Southeast of London, probably almost, I could say it's on the South Coast, one of the biggest ones. <laughs> Uh, population just over a quarter of a million, so not too big, not too small. Uh, one of the biggest ports uh, in the UK, more about that later. Uh, home port for the largest cruise ships in the world. In fact, uh, it's debatable whether Southampton is the first largest or the second largest cruise terminal in, in Europe. It's definitely the largest in Northwest Europe, probably goes to second largest in all of Europe, to Barcelona by about few uh, cruise ship calls. Um, but yeah, quite a, uh, a thriving port and city. Uh, there is a lot of new development happening within the city, including uh, uh, new bars, cafes, pubs, restaurants, more student accommodation, which, which obviously this, this city definitely needs, uh, as do most of the cities currently in UK and Europe. More of that later. Uh, next slide, please.
next slide Teju. right um, again in and around southampton or or solent as we call it so solent uh, the names derived from a body of water which separates uh, uk mainland from isle of wight uh, just to the south of uh, southampton as you can see there Obviously, in and around this area, quite a bit of heritage, uh, as well as uh, tourist attractions and, and visiting places. Yeah, we have listed a few of them here. Uh, in fact, as you could probably have noticed, my profile picture is uh, next to that uh, Stonehenge picture that you see. Uh, obviously, very close to London, and, and, and which we'll talk about more. Obviously, I think what we've probably missed out in here is Bournemouth, uh, just to the west as well. Bournemouth and Pool, uh, one of the finest uh, few beaches uh, in the UK. But yeah, lot, lot, lots of places uh, around if you have time outside of your studies, uh, which you do have, uh, and probably Gila will tell you more about it later. Um, and yeah, moving to the next slide, please. Uh, some of our facilities, uh, yes, uh, the building which you saw in our, in our first slide as well, uh, and Gilam has done most of her studying in there, uh, is the Spark building uh, on the left, top left. Uh, it has, in, in the first few years of opening, it continuously won uh, award for the best higher education teaching facility in the UK. Uh, we've got UK's prop, arguably uh, Europe's largest or one of the Europe's largest uh, simulation set, night type simulation centers, which we're quite proud of. Various other facilities such as state-of-the-art sport complex, which as a student you'll have access to. Uh, we've got other facilities, mock courtroom. Uh, again, we've got access to Adobe, Adobe Cre Creative Campus, so all of our students do, nursing facilities and so on. So quite, quite proud of our infrastructure that we've got within the university. Uh, next slide, please. Student residences, obviously, uh, university has its uh, own student residences, uh, but not enough for all of our student population. So obviously then there is uh, private sector uh, student accommodation as well, some of which is listed here. Again, uh, the costs listed there as well, anywhere between close to five to 6,000 pounds uh, or they are about a year, slightly higher in some places. Uh, and then obviously we can, uh, Gaurav can tell you more about it. And if you have any more questions, we can tell you more about accommodations. But yes, all of most of the student accommodation is walking distance uh, from the university, 10 to 15 minutes in house uh, accommodation, as well as most of the other uh, student accommodation dotted around private one is also in and around the university. So not, not too far. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah, Soul and Sport. Uh, we've got our own uh, test park, sports ground uh, for training of uh, various sports. Again, this is slightly off campus. Our main uh, sports campus, uh, sports complex rather, which is uh, open in 2019. Uh, 28 million building uh, and it's got uh, basketball courts, badminton courts, uh, two state-of-the-art gyms, which again you will have access to. Also to mention here, uh, we've got close connections uh, as a university and our sports uh, department to, to Southampton Football Club, uh, Premier League club going to championship and hopefully back to Premier League shortly again. And obviously, uh, First Division uh, Hampshire County Cricket Club uh, based in a GS Bowl, uh, which we have also close connections to, uh, which also hosts, obviously, uh, international cricket matches, including uh, last year's um, World Ten Test Championship final, which, which was between India and New Zealand. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, 
didn't mention on that slide, Kunal, but there is a cricket club. I know that because some of our students are in the cricket club. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah. So within within the uh, university, we've got lots of uh, within students' union, we've got lots of clubs and activities, and 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 cricket club is is one of them, and and quite a few of our students, uh, particularly from the subcontinent, uh, are part of that cricket club. They enhance that cricket club. <laughs> yes, they do. Uh, I wish I could join it as well, but. Uh, keeping that aside, um, uh, just few of the areas that the uh, university. So maritime is, is at the heart of the university. Uh, we're quite proud of that heritage through through Vosash, uh, and we do everything maritime. But uh, university is not just about maritime. Uh, there's lots of areas that we we thrive in and and are uh, quite uh, uh, subject lead, leading in. And some of them are uh, mentioned there, to name a few. Uh, film and media, we are quite proud of. Uh, <clears throat> uh, sports and fitness, health and medical sciences, uh, computing, uh, law, uh, criminology, all of the areas and, and all of those mentioned on the screen are, are, are quite our forte. Next slide, please. And as you've seen on your screen, this uh, introduction to Nicola, uh, our course leader for uh, postgraduate uh, maritime business and law provisions uh, and, and logistic provisions. Uh, I'll, I'll let Nicola come in at this point and say a little bit more about herself. Good afternoon, everybody. So my name is Nicola Price Roberts. I am the course leader for both of the maritime uh, programs that I'm going to talk about today. Um, being stopped. Um, TJL, may I have the next slide, please? So we as uh, the maritime master's degrees we are based within the Warsash Maritime School so Warsash Maritime School is everything from cadet training through to PhD um, and everything in between professional courses the um, traditional degree courses the technical and professional training that seafarers go through as well. So all of that is situated within Warsash Maritime School. And what's fantastic about that is that you have all the experts, technical, um, professional, within one school. So we have that huge resource and it is a really, really fantastic resource. My colleagues are from all over the world, all over the UK as well. Um, very few actually originally come from Southampton or from the uh, south of the UK. So we are truly international. The heritage of Warsash goes back beyond the age of the university. The university was formed over a number of years from particular institutions and the maritime institution is the oldest and the longest, and it has a long and really illustrious history and is recognised throughout the world. Um, you know, the Warsash name is known uh, globally throughout the shipping industry. As Kunal, my colleague, has already mentioned, we have world class facilities. We really do. You know, I have. We have people come from overseas as visitors to the university and they professional visitors and they are amazed and astounded at the um, just the sheer quality of um, resources that we have and, you know, that the high tech uh, campus that we're in. So that's something that's a real privilege to work within. Um, can we have the next slide, please? There you go. So that's the question that you're probably asking yourself. Why should I consider studying for a maritime degree at Solent University or particularly Warsash Maritime School within Solent University? Well, I've already mentioned that we have this long history. 
But the other thing which I am very proud of, and we see this within our student body, and I've already mentioned my colleagues, is although we're based in Southampton, we are truly a global entity. Our students, as you'll see in, in a future slide, are from all over the world, and our students are all over, uh, uh, sorry, and our graduates are all over the world. At last count, purely from the programmes that I'm talking about, we counted about 75 countries um, where our students have come from. So it is a real benefit to have such an international cohort of students at any one time because it's representative of the industry itself and you know people bring their experience they bring their cultural knowledge and experience share that with everybody in the classroom through the year and then when they go away you know everybody's linked everybody's got friends all over the world in all different parts and that's exactly what you need you know from a networking point of view we're based in Southampton, and I know that Kunal has mentioned Southampton, but I want to talk about our links with Southampton Port. Um, it is one of the major ports in the UK. Um, it's a significant port, and it always has been throughout history because of its um, position in the UK. Um, it is it is probably, I know Canal's probably looking at Barcelona, but it is the largest cruise terminal in Europe with the Carnival brand, which is Cunard, which is P&O. Um, but there are many other cruise ships that um, are situated in Southampton and call to Southampton. And one of the great things about Southampton, and I'm not originally from Southampton at all. I'm actually from Liverpool. One of the good things about Southampton is that we have all of the benefits of being close to maritime London. Um, and so that's easy to visit. It's 70 miles away. It's an hour on the train, you know, that, that, that kind of journey. Um, so we have all of that resource on our doorstep, including access to some of the maritime institutions in London, the United Nations International Maritime Organization. Um, and yet we don't have London accommodation prices, which is crucial, I think, when you're studying um, not to have to be paying London prices. London prices are some of the most expensive in the world. So um, we have that, you know, that proximity without all that financial pain. Next slide, please. So the two programmes that I am course leader for are MSC International Maritime Business and MSC International Shipping and Logistics. And when we think about the names of our programmes, we sit down as a teaching team and we very carefully consider those names. And it's deliberate that we have the word international in both of the titles because they truly reflect what we are about our intention um, that the courses will be both uh, available to the international community, but also represent the international community. And I think you can see on those pictures, um, the graduates above, they've got some very strange things in their hands, haven't they, like aliens and all kinds, but you can see that um, that's actually, um, it's not a year group, that is a group of our graduates um, that came from Malaysia. Okay, so, you know, there's a little Malaysian group there. They all wanted their photograph taken together. Um, and we have links with, with, you know, countries around the world. And then you can see uh, below some of the um, cadets passing out. It's always nice to see them in their uniforms. Next slide, please. So our degree curriculum, once we've determined what we want to call our uh, degree programmes, we think very carefully about what they should contain. And it is not just what we, the lecturers, although we're all um, subject matter experts, but it isn't just what we think they should contain. We work very closely with the maritime industry. Uh, many of us have worked within the industry. Um, or have been around the industry or done research in the industry, um, you know, throughout our careers. We have lots of 
personal contacts, personal friends, but also professional contacts. And the university, of course, has lots of uh, consultancy contacts. And so what we do is we look at what the industry needs, not just now, but what the industry will need in five years time, in 10 years time. We're looking uh, always to the future. And our programmes and our way of teaching, our ethos is all about um, real life learning. That's a, that's a theme that runs through the university actually. And what that means is we're not sitting talking about dry academic theoretical issues, although we will of course um, use those. We're actually looking at and creating teaching materials, uh, teaching plans and assessments that will prepare you for the roles that industry need you to, to go into when you graduate. And it's why, I, you, and I have real, real challenge put, putting this slide together because I can only squeeze in so many tiny little um, uh, logos for companies without um, it becoming meaningless. They, they, you know, they would just become pixels, wouldn't they, if I put too many on there. But you can see this is a, a snapshot, an absolute snapshot um, of where some of our graduates have gone on to. And I think when you look across there, you'll see, um, you, perhaps you'll recognise some huge international names, um, some regulatory names, um, and, but there are many, many more besides what you can see. So what do our graduates go on to become? Well, um, I'll give you a profile of our graduates first. So some of our graduates come from an undergraduate related maritime shipping logistics degree and they're looking to do a master's programme. Many of our graduates have already had time at sea. And they are very valuable for the industry. Very the industry is always very interested in people who have got both um, a nautical career and then the academic qualification of a master's programme. You have it all. Um, to, to top all that, because of the international nature of our students, we always have students who um, speak an array of languages as well. So can you imagine how interesting um, you are to industry and whilst I can't promise everyone a job I, I would never do that that would be uh, wicked actually it would not be right um, I can say that there are years and the last few years have been very typical of this where employers will be coming to me and my colleagues now saying have you got anyone and Quite often I've said, you need to come a little bit earlier. Everybody's already fixed up. They know what they're doing there either, particularly with um, the undergraduate students because they've absolutely finished everything now. Many of them are starting work in the next couple of weeks, but actually some of my master's students are starting work in the next couple of weeks, even though they've got their um, final dissertation to write. So you can see um, across the screen you can see the type of companies so we have uh, students that go into ship broking they go into vessel operations they go into ship management um, many of our graduates choose to go deliberately into um, international logistics of which shipping is a, is, is a part but they go into to, to specifically you know logistics companies and of course uh, port operators locally and internationally um, it really is and we've we, we do have some students who go into the um, regulatory bodies so for example maritime coast guard agency or the marine accident investigation branch um, it, it, it's really across the you know the, the whole industry if you can think of a company we probably have someone who has worked for them okay um, and I'm emphasizing that because I know it's a common question that I get asked when I'm talking to potential applicants. They always and rightly want to know um, what will happen after I graduate, what opportunities are available to me. Uh, next slide, please. Oh no, I've put T. Gel to sleep. Oh no, she's awake. 
here we go. So let's talk about the uh, two particular programmes that we offer. And these are the names of the modules that will be offered uh, to this September's intake. The year after, the themes will remain the same, but the slightly different module titles. But let's look at what we have now. And you'll see some commonality between the two programmes. They're sister programmes, so they share some modules. Maritime management, it is exactly uh, what it says it is. It's about the um, skills and knowledge that you would need to become strategic managers of the future. International maritime law, well, it's the law of the ship, relating to the ship, admiralty law it's sometimes referred to, and that's on, and they're on both programmes. Maritime operations and transport, you can see, is also on both programmes. Uh, maritime operations and transport is around um, different ship types, their trades, but more increasingly, it's about the um, environmental and operational sustainability of um, operating ships. We have the economics of international trade and shipping. Of course, shipping is driven by economics, so um, it's important that uh, students on both, uh, both programmes would have a module in that. And everybody is taught how to do uh, master's level research okay because that's important because you can see that everybody will then do a dissertation the dissertation is the is the biggest element of your um, master's degree program and you do it on a subject of your choice okay so as I say to my students you've only got yourself to blame if you don't like your dissertation to topic because you chose it but you are supported in your dissertation both obviously with the preparation of how to um, to put such a big piece of work together with the research methods module and you're also supported with an experienced supervisor from the teaching team and here's where the programs become different so let me uh, focus first on international maritime business and then I'll talk about shipping and logistics. So maritime business takes a, uh, if you like, a more, um, if you, pure business uh, path now. It's uh, got two distinctive modules, international trade and commercial law. So that is about the carriage of goods, the sale of goods on an international basis um, and also includes uh, things like, because we're talking about carriage of goods, um, charter party law and practice. And then in international uh, maritime business, you will also then do finance and business risk. So this is about getting finance for your um, maritime projects, largely for ships, I would say, but it can also be for uh, other big um, infrastructure like port projects. Um, and also managing your business and financial risk. So hedging, um, using the financial instruments that are available um, out there in the marketplace to manage financial risk. Now, if I turn to international shipping and logistics, you can see that the distinctive uh, difference there is that there is supply chain management, which is very specific logistics subject area, managing um, the, the whole supply chain, shipping only being a part of that, and also operational risk management. So that's the, um, the you know, looking at risk generally in a maritime context, the, the operational mm -hmm. risks that exist. Um, you know, when you're looking at shipping and logistics companies and shipping and logistics activities. So that's the, um, in, a, in, a, in a, you know, in a nutshell, really, that's the, uh, the headline subjects that you will find and the difference between. And you can see there's a lot of commonality, but there is a difference between um, the two programmes. And uh, a question that I'm often asked is which one should I take? Um, the reality is uh, from our uh, employer's point of view, from the industry point of view, 
I have truthfully found that they don't mind whether you've taken maritime business or shipping and logistics. Um, the shipping and logistics suggests that you are looking more at uh, perhaps um, managing logistics operations, perhaps ports. Um, the maritime business suggests that you're thinking more of, um, you know, going into a, a, a you know, a more business environment, strictly business side of the um, of the industry. But it doesn't matter. There is no such thing as like, oh, no, I've taken shipping and logistics, but I want to go and work for, you know, a and i insurance company. They'll be they'll be just as pleased that you have that program as if you'd done international maritime business. And that's the truth that, that you know, that's the reality of that um, choice. So pick which one you think you would like is my advice. OK, next slide, please. Both of our degrees are externally accredited by chartered in, uh, industry bodies. Um, the Chartered Institute of Transport and Logistics and the Chartered Institute of Shipbrokers. Now, what does this mean? It means that you can, um, when you've enrolled on the programmes, whichever one you want to, to, to enrol on, um, you can immediately join as a student member, the Chartered Institute of Transport and Logistics. You don't have to take an exam. They recognise the syllabus that we have and they will take you as a student member. Now, you can move through over your career um, the different membership levels in the Chartered Institute of Transport and Logistics. Um, you, know, you make an application based on your uh, experience, qualification and seniority in the industry, reaching um, senior fellow. Um, with the Chartered Institute of Shipbrokers, they operate slightly different. Uh, what they do is they insist that everybody does do examinations. There is a set of qualifying examinations. However, you would get the maximum number of exemptions um, by having our degree so actually you i would my recommendation always to students if they're interested in joining the chartered institute of shipbrokers is wait till you've finished your degree get the maximum number of exemptions and then in the year that you after you graduate take the remainder um exams they're not very ex uh, very difficult actually the exams um they're definitely what i would say is undergraduate level but the Institute of Shipbrokers, you know, they require you to, to go through that, that process. Um, what does it mean when you're chartered? It means, well, it's actually what they refer to as a royal charter. It's a benchmark. It's an industry standard. Um, these organisations uh, exist through a royal charter, which means that they um denote a level of quality of their members and they guard their reputation fiercely so we're very proud that the um, institutes accredit the degrees that we have it's a it's a it's a mark of quality it's a mark of quality by your peers in the industry um, which is very uh, pleasing to have next slide please so it's not all about the subjects that you will do in the classroom with me and my colleagues. We believe not just as, as a programme, but the university believes that there is so much more to a good and rounded education. And so we will have um, industry speakers come to uh, visit, um, visiting speakers. We have uh, an annual maritime conference every year in February. It's a, it's a week long um, where we have external speakers come from industry. Um, we always make a point of inviting some of our alumni who are working in the industry, some at very senior levels and some who have literally just, you know, been making their journey through their career in the last few years, because it's nice for uh, we think for students to be able to see what they have become, if you like. Um, so that's a specific point in the year, but we have industry speakers throughout the year through our relationship with professional bodies, not just the two that I mentioned, um, but 
our wider Warsash relationship, we have um, opportunities for our students to um, go to uh, speaking uh, events in the university from the IMRS, uh, RENA, um, the, the Royal Institute of Navigation, just to, just to name a few. Um, I'll leave JC, who is with us currently, to talk about um, the work of the Worshipful Company of Shipwrights, because we're engaged with them as well. Um, but we do have, uh, you know, a lot of speakers that come. And not just that. Um, so, you know, obviously the speakers coming, it's interesting to hear about specific roles and in parts of the industry, but it's also an opportunity to network. I am going to mention the student run maritime society in a minute but we'll you know i'll just mention it so it links back to this um aside from shipping solent as my colleague kunal has already uh shown on his slides um solent has a really good history of student clubs and societies and our world-class sports facilities allow us to have very good sports facilities and sports clubs um, you know, I know that obviously because of where we're situated on the south coast, you know, anyone who's interested in sailing and in fact, all the yachts that people sail are all designed by fellow um, students of Warsash anyway. Um, so we do get quite a lot of sailors, but we also have um, clubs and societies which are uh, slightly surprising to me sometimes. Um, so I always recall a time when I was having lunch at the International Maritime Organization. I was having lunch with the head of the legal department and he's an American who used to work at the US Coast Guard. And he told me, um, we didn't know each other and he you know, asked where I was from and I said Solent and he said, oh, he said, you've got the best American football team in the country. I didn't even know we had an American football team. There you go. So, so it's not always apparent when you're walking around the campus, um, the extent of the clubs and societies and even how good they are. Um, I'm very proud of one of our current MSc students because he very quietly said to me before we had our Easter break, um, Nicola, I um, will miss the last day of lectures. And I said, OK why is that and he said because i have to go off to a training camp in morocco and i said oh okay training for what and he said well i'm a i'm a marathon runner and i said okay and he said i will be setting the pace for the um the world class marathon runners at the london olympics uh, sorry the london um Mar marathon and I looked at him and I thought, bearing in mind, I've been teaching him since September. And I said, I didn't even know you, you, you. I didn't know anything about this. And he said, yeah, yeah, that's why I'm, you know, I'm part, obviously, of the athletics club as well in, in Solent. But that's he's world class. He was setting the pace for the two hour um, marathon runners and I thought wow and you were in my classroom all this time so I'm I've worked at Solon for many years now and I'm continuous, continuously um, amazed at what our students are doing when they're not in the classroom okay next slide please field trips we believe in field trips as well as um, speakers coming to the university, we have always liked to um, go and visit. And I mentioned that our proximity to London is one of our, um, you know, real assets for, for, for Southampton. And in the past and in the future, we will now resume. Um, we have, these are some of the things that we will we have done in the past. Um, personally, I always like to take students to the International Maritime Headquarters in London. It hasn't been possible for the last few years because of COVID. It's been uh, a real challenge to, to visit, you know, for all the reasons that everybody knows. You know, I won't go back over those. Um, but we're very keen because it seems now that particularly IMO meetings are happening again in person. Um, and so we're very welcome with uh, at the IMO. Um, 
and trips, for example, to the Baltic Exchange, to, to, to the City of London, to Lloyd's of London, the Insurance House, to the Bank of England, you know, they're all based in the city, the Metal Exchange. And of course, Southampton Port, which is on our, and, and Freightliner Terminal, which is on our doorstep. Um, so we're very keen that they will resume um, in the next academic year, uh, because that's now possible, thank, thankfully. Okay, so um, th the top picture you're looking at there is a, is a group of uh, master's students from a few years ago, and they are just looking at the faces. Um, and there you, there you go, we are at the International Maritime Organization. If you don't like the picture, please give it, I'm not, uh, I'm an amateur photographer um, and trying to squeeze everybody in is, is, is quite a difficult, uh, difficult task. But there you go. It's just a, a nice memory of a visit to IMO because it's it's all of our international maritime organ organization. You know, it isn't exclusively for the um, diplomats that go to the meetings and represent their various countries. And the IMO is welcome welcomes maritime students as well. Okay, next slide, please. I mentioned we're truly global. I know I keep talking about it, but I'm very proud. Um, and it's, it, it's one of the main reasons that I like to work in Solent, um, just how global we are. Um, when I say we are proud to have graduates from, I don't mean the university, I mean the maritime courses. We are very proud to have graduates from across the globe. Um, and this is probably not an exhaustive list. Um, all the time when I look at it, I think I can add some more countries as um, we have students from various countries, but it genuinely gives you the, um, the idea that we are truly global. Okay, next slide, please. One of the nice things that happens at Solent is we're not the biggest university, we're a very specialised university. And as a consequence of that, we know who our students are, we know them. Pe people who visit the university are often surprised and, and will say to me, you know you're the names of all your students? And I say, I know, of course I know their names. I know their, of course I, I know them. I know the names of some of their dogs, you know? Um, of course we do. It's a, it's a nice place to work. It's a nice place to, um, you know, to be. Uh, and we really are, as, a, as an institution, proud that we, we do get recognised externally for the support and care that our students have. And that is in different areas. So, you know, generally um, we have in the teaching building situated in what we refer to as the student village and um, the student hub, which is the kind of one stop shop for, for any kind of general day to day, you know, issues. And so we, we, we have that dedicated resource. There's also a lot of study and academic support aside from that offered by the um, subject lecturers, there's a lot of resource behind the scenes and available to you. Um, there are workshops, um, there is a resource within the you know, electronic systems that we use. And we know that for many students uh, coming from overseas, and as I say, we have a lot, um, life in the UK, in particular, the ever moving issue around visas which we as an institution have no control over it's a you know it's it was subject to the the politics of the day shall we say um sometimes uh advice is needed you know and particularly around you know you you will already have your visa when you're there but what does your visa enable you to do in terms of employment you know things like you can work um for 20 hours a week but that and you can also volunteer that doesn't in, include the 20 hours a week. Um, so some of the, you know, technical advice is needed there. Um, and, and in particular, you know, the, the process of uh, coming to Solent, there's an international student support team to help with all of that. Okay, so that's uh, a really good resource, both for 
international students and also for us as lecturers because you know we can't keep up to date um individually with all of that level of um change and and, and the support that's needed um and so i'm really grateful that i have colleagues that specialize in doing that next slide please So I touched on before that the students have their own maritime society. It's student led. It's um, what happens each year in the um, maritime society is totally uh, determined by who the student, um, if you're the executive body, if you like, the president and the um, the people who are running it. Um, and they get those roles through elections every year. Um, so if we have, you know, if the student society has a really good president and a really good executive team then there is usually a, a series of um, external speakers um, social events different types of social events um, uh, evening meetings um, but there is a, a maritime society and I always say it is what the students make it in any one year so um, you would be automatically part of that and you would have an input put into uh, what you wanted from that okay uh, next slide please so this is the real um, business end of the presentation how much will it cost me and what kind of costs am I likely to incur um, very very important uh, things that should be at the forefront of your mind OK, so here are the uh, tuition fees for the coming academic year um, for MSc. And you can see that the uh, we work really hard to keep our um, costs down. We really do work hard to keep our costs down because we know that that's a very considered issue. Um, so for international students, it's uh, £15,300. OK. Uh, why 300 not 500 or 15,000 but anyway 15,300 pounds okay um and in that we are ranked as one of the most affordable universities and I think that that's um something that you know we are proud of we are relatively small so we don't have lots of big campuses around you know the city we we are as Kunal showed, you know, we're kind of based and that's a that's that keeps costs uh, lower than some other bigger institutions that have lots of buildings that they have to um, support, if you like. Um, now, these living expensive expenses costs, um, they're a couple of years out of date. I would put a little bit on for inflation. OK, I would put a little bit on for inflation, um, but it gives you a ballpark of the kind of costs associated with um, studying for a year in in uh, in you know, on top of your fees. OK, just gives you a benchmark as to I mean, you'd have those expenses if you were living at home or most of those expenses, I'm sure. But just gives you an idea of um cost of living particularly in the UK and where it may slightly differ okay so I know that you'll uh, keep these slides so I don't need to go into that any in any more detail they're just there for you to have a look at next slide please okay so um, here are a couple of uh, comments from our students um, I think it's very important that our students have the voice. I know I've done a lot of talking today, um, but that's my role in this, you know, this afternoon's um, proceedings. But we will hear from someone who is a current student. But here are some quotes. Um, and, you know, what are you working on at the moment? So this is captured uh, when we have um our maritime week for example we we, we capture um these statements every year and there's just a couple of things for you to, to to have a look at um what are you working on at the moment is one of our um students uh, alumni from the past and uh they spoke at this week at this year's um conference and they've set up a private equity fund 
pelagic partners okay we're very um proud of our students and what they go on to achieve they really are running the shipping industry and that's something that's very um humbling but also a real sense of pride for us next slide please okay and enough of me you've probably tired of my voice already although i'm very happy to answer any questions later on but let's hear from jc who is um and it isn't scripted i asked her yesterday if she would come and i'm so delighted that she has agreed to come and uh, talk to you because she can tell you uh, whether what I've just said is is her reality um, and and also give her impression and any advice any tips and I'm sure answer any questions that you may have and you've probably got more questions for JC than you have for me or Kunal but over to JC thank you Nicola so um, my uh experience uh, before talking about that uh, i'd first uh, share like why i joined this course at the first uh, first place um, so i uh, like i have been a seafarer uh, and um, i have been into technical um, side of it so i wanted to do a masters which has got uh, as nicola mentioned before which has got uh, the maritime uh, specialization which is was about the business management and also which is um, international uh, like the it had to be the international so the international maritime business which uh, i'm uh, like i have studied here um was fulfilling all of this like it was international it was uh, having a specialization in maritime uh, and it was about the business so that's why i joined this course and uh, after joining uh, then uh, I felt that, okay, so the location is also very important where your university is located. Washers is of course a very big name an established name has got an established alumni network, which is very important uh, when we think about uh, the what's after graduation and also for the career growth, uh, it matters like uh, what is your alumni, uh, what they are doing, where they are placed and, uh, it, uh, and the, it also gives the networking opportunity. So uh, the location was uh, also important as uh, like, my, like Nicola and Kunal mentioned that Southampton is very close to London. So it has got a location advantage and uh, Southampton is not, uh, while the living cost is uh, in comparison to London, it's quite moderate, but uh, it's quite a happening place. And you never feel like it's only about university. It's not only about university. It's not only about your um, like thinking about all the time, the studies. It's very important to study and uh, to have that time management. But uh, it's not only about studying. It's also about the social life. And Southampton is quite, quite a nice place. I can uh, share my experience that uh, uh, although I have been a seafarer, but for the sailing, uh, like, uh, Washers has got, like Solent University has got uh, sailing society by the students. And uh, for the first time in my life, like I tried sailing after coming here, which has been amazing. Uh, also some of the hobbies, which I um, didn't have much time before. And uh, I have uh, tried my hand and I, by joining some societies here that I run by students. And uh, what else is uh, when it comes about uh, like planning the career after this, after the graduation. So uh, we had some speakers about, from the industry uh, and uh, which gave us uh, quite, quite uh, a good opportunity to network, to learn from their experience. And they have been very open because they were uh, coming and speaking in an academic environment and uh, to the students. So they have been very open in sharing their personal experience and uh, providing the career tips, which was very helpful. Uh, I can share that uh, I um, was very new here uh, because like as an international student, so we have many things in mind, many apprehensions and uh, many questions. And when I came here, like as a student, uh, there was this um, ship rights uh, company and then they uh, have a mentorship program, which is that if you apply as a student, they uh, choose a mentor uh, for you, depending on your individual profile and uh, depending on your interest. And uh, then you can one-on-one, uh, -on -one, like you can uh, interact with your mentor to plan uh, your career ahead or uh, like the learn from, from his or her experience. 
which has been very helpful because I got quite a few tips, which has been very helpful, beneficial for me uh, from the mentor I have been assigned to. Uh, I also learned about that uh, you can do an internship in IMO, International Maritime Organization, which I would have not known. Uh, like, uh, it, it was from the, from the lecturers uh, here in Warsaw. So, which has been very, uh, I think like it's a fantastic opportunity to uh, go to IMO as an intern and then learn like how it, like how they work and to have a glimpse of uh, like their working procedure and um, their whereabouts. So uh, it has been quite, quite nice. If you think about like what is after this, after this is uh, of course like networking plays uh, like a very big role in your career growth. And as a mature student or as a uh, like the person who has been working in the industry and who is uh, like uh, like desirous to take the next step in the career. So a uh, business management uh, with a specialization in maritime, it matters a lot. Um, as Nicola mentioned that uh, we can have some exemptions if we want to uh, become a part a member of uh, Institute of Chartered Ship Brokers. Uh, which really saves time and which uh, helps you in achieving that goal of becoming a member because it is an examination based membership. So, yeah. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer that. And it has been fantastic. Uh, I have been, I joined the last September. So I have been a student of uh, 2022-23 cohort. And uh, it has been like our class has been uh, international, truly international and the experience has been fantastic. Uh, there has been learning from the uh, lecturers. There has been learning from the industry professionals uh, through various events uh, that has been organized by uh, the university. And also there has been learning from the peers because the backgrounds are usually like the different for the students. So you actually share some experiences and uh, like you learn from them as well. So yeah, it has been very uh, like a quite a fantastic a journey so far. Thanks, thanks, uh, JC, for your feedback uh, and your time. I know we uh, requested you to come at the last moment, and uh, you know your that's fine. Really <laughs> helps. Um, thanks, uh, Nicola and Kunal as well for uh, providing information about the university and the course. So, so really amazing. I mean, uh, uh, so although you know Solent, what's our, you, you guys are the pioneers. I mean, you're fairly big in terms of maritime. Um, uh, uh, industry, uh, but still you are able to maintain that seventh most affordable, uh, you know, courses over here, uh, which is great. The kind of um, um, uh, um, um, jobs that you are able to offer, right? Uh, which, which, which Nicola mentioned that you know even before passing out, there are chances that uh, that the persons are are already placed. Which is uh, which is really amazing, and uh, you know all of that validation, of course, you know coming uh, from from JC really helps. So 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 thanks for uh, all of that. Um, um, to all the participants, you can start to write your uh, questions in the chat window while I just take the last final uh, slide, uh, which is on how C and Beyond could uh, help you. So. Essentially, um, you know, through CN Beyond, we are partnered to various maritime universities and uh, we can help you choose the right course for you. Um, uh, it could be a postgrad course or it could also be a COC course in case you are looking at uh, one of them. Then once you select the course, you need to fill the form. Um, then, uh, you know, filling the form, you need to <clears throat> uh, apply for English proficiency exams. You need to um, uh, have your visa issue sorted out, you need accommodation, you need to, you know, have your financial assistance, uh, you might need some loan or, or uh, you know, you, you, you want to remit money over to the university. Um, so, so there are things involved, which I'm not sure everyone is, uh, um, is aware of, right? And sometimes you go to a bank, the bank is a little costly uh, in terms of remittance. Whereas NBFCs are a little cheaper, so so we we kind of help you um, uh, from selection of a college of a course all the way to your admission 
and until we essentially send you off to the uh, particular course uh, and that, uh, to the particular university. Um, so that's where C and Beyond could support uh, uh, in, in case you are interested. Um, yep. So uh, yeah, I, th I think we can stop sharing the slide now, uh, Tejal, and uh, possibly we can also take the Q and A's. But before that, maybe if you can, uh, Tejal, if you can have the poll uh, through in terms of uh, you know um, inclination from the participants to, to to enroll for this course, if you can have that poll, please. Yeah. So I'm just launching the poll. For whatever reason, I can't see the poll. I'm hoping it, uh, others can. Yes, yeah, we can. Oh, that's fantastic feedback. So, Tejal, I mean, once you have the feedback, you can end the poll and then we can start taking on the questions. Yeah, I've ended the poll. Now we can take the Q&A. All right, thanks. Um, we've got a question from Aman, I guess a couple of questions. Um, Aman, is, is IELTS required to enroll for the course? Uh, I guess the answer is yes. Um, uh, maybe Jilam or uh, um, Nicola, you could validate that. Yeah, I think so I can, sorry. Oh, G yes, JC, Nicola, I'll tell you. <laughs> no, J no, please, JC, you go. That's it's it's better. They, I think, everybody hears from you. Go, please. Uh, so, uh, so thank you, Nicola. So uh, I personally did not write IELTS. I wrote uh, the Pearson, and uh, because the IELTS, you get the result a little later. Like you need to wait a little uh, um, for getting the result, whereas the Pearson, the result comes out faster. And I think like my Pearson was accepted. So if uh, there is anything else other than Pearson and IELTS, so Nicola, I think can share that. Okay, so um, yes is the, um, is the answer. Uh, uh, an English language test, uh, whether that be IELTS or as uh, JC has said, Pearson, um, depending on your, um, qualification for coming to the university so for example if you have a degree certificate or certificates and it says that you was you studied in the medium of English um it may be that you could uh just do Duolingo okay but Pearson seems to be very um very popular I think for for the for the reason I didn't know that it's 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 one of those things as a course leader um you don't know what you don't know um, and because I don't have to take the IELTS test, um, I have to take my advice from my um, international colleagues. Um, but I, I have seen more and more with applications Pearson. And now I know why. It's, uh, it's more efficient. It's quicker. So, yes, some form of recognised English test is required. And that would be the same for the whole of... Um, you know, UK higher education, it's a, it's an external stipulation, but it's also a good thing. Nice. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, I think a lot of, uh, a few participants did give Duolingo as well, and which is um, probably a little easy to prepare for us is what I've heard as well uh, from a few persons. So um, if I'm, uh, before I take, uh, so Aman's next question, which, which you've already answered is the post-study work visa. There is a two-year post-study work visa is what uh, Jilam has uh, already answered that. Th thanks for uh, that. Um, um, so Jilam, a question to you, how much time did it take for you to, uh, once you started to apply for the course till the time you got your say uh, uh, acceptance, um, how, how much time did it uh, take? Well, for me, uh, I applied a little early uh, because I wanted to um, plan it ahead. 
and uh, wanted to be on time. So for me, it took around uh, three months, I think, yeah, around three to three and a half months. But uh, I believe like you can always uh, apply early to be uh, on the safe side because at the last moment, what happened was um, if you get some, uh, if you're working then and you have some professional commitment or you have got uh, some personal commitment, you always know that you have enough time for visa if you are applying before, like uh, with enough time in hand. So, yeah. Yeah, that's really good advice from JC. Um, as course leader, I spend a lot of September um, dealing with um, applicants and the challenges that they are having and the fears that they will be late and some of them inevitably are late. So every year I, um, I'm not trying to uh, sell the course. I'm not trying to, you know, to, to scare anybody, but as a course leader, as a module leader, I am desperately aware that missing those first few weeks um, is not the best um, thing to happen. And so, you know, I, I'm really genuinely saying to you just as a human being, I'm really not selling the course, but you know, if you're serious and you really would like to join us this September, um, please, please apply literally within the next week or two because it is a um, considered process that we in the university have got no control over. Um, you know, a lot of it is external to uh, towards particularly, you know, the, the visa, um, the, the visa interview and, um, and, and getting that. And of course, at this, you know, as we go through the summer and the closer we get to September, of course, the um, that only you know becomes more of a crush and um, one of the things I wanted to say Gaurav was the um the slide that you put up about the support that you can give to applicants um you know I was looking at that and I was thinking that that's really really good um and I and I, and I would say that it, it is very helpful um to have support as you're going through that process because it really just expedites things um, you don't you don't waste time um, trying to to tick you know go through all the hoops and tick all the boxes that you have to do um, and when you're being supported by um, by someone or an organisation who knows the process um, it is doing the process all the time it's, it 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 really helps it re it really helps um, so yeah I would I would say it is. Um, it's a consideration every year at how I manage um, anyone who has not been able to get their visa and then travel to the UK um, for the start of term. It happens every year. There are a few um, and it's really heartbreaking, you know, because it's it just makes it that little bit, you know, more intense and, and you know, difficult. Everybody gets over it, but it's it's better if you can get here on time always. Yeah. No, I absolutely agree. Uh, uh, applying early is the best uh, case, and and if you have someone who's 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 kind of been in the field, it really helps. Um, and just to, I mean, uh, last year we had Captain uh, Joy Vargas who 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 came to, who who attended the course through us, and uh, he applied, I guess, in July or first week of August. Uh, we somehow managed to get through an. Uh, um, uh, through an uh, urgent uh, urgent visa, we he, he of course had to pay a little bit more, but but, mm -hmm. but that's not uh, recommended. Apply as soon as possible. You don't want to be having butterflies in your stomach uh, at the last moment whether I'll be able to meet in time or not. But uh, but yeah, my, I think a very sound advice. Thanks for that. Yeah, I think Captain Vargas has had a very nice year. He's done very well, as you would expect. Yeah. To add to what Captain Gaurav and Nicola said, uh, there is another uh, like the aspect of it as well. Like as the because September is the biggest cohort, so as the time passes and you are trying to book your flight ticket, it becomes more and more expensive. So if if you can book the like if you have the visa and you can like the book uh, a little before, like before a little in advance, then you're uh, like um, you save uh, quite a uh, you know it's it's more economical to book in advance the flight ticket. So it helps that way as well.
good advice good advice yeah right uh, so uh, aman question was on ielts comes with computer based uh, uh, where we we can get the result in 3 to 5 what's the minimum score uh, which a person needs to have for to qualify for this course please um in what in what way do you mean minimum score are you talking about the ielts score yeah yes okay um so it's uh, typically seven for um, MSC. Um, so there or thereabouts, I see various different scores for each aspect. Um, I never see anything less than 6.5. Thanks. Yeah, I think you're right. Right. Um, there's a question from Abhilash. And uh, I think this is a question which we uh, hear get a lot. So um, in, in summary, the question is, what is the right level? Uh, you know, uh, if a person is sailing as a, at an operations level, is it the right time to get into the course or would you prefer to for persons to be a little bit more experienced? So maybe at a master chief engineer level to, to, to get into this course. Well, what's, what's the, I mean, um, what, what, what's the best level for a student to get into? Okay. I, okay. Oh, no, Kunal, please. Okay, no, I, I can take that. So, um, yeah, ideally, so the, there's obviously entry requirements into the course. So if you've got an honors degree, uh, which you might have as if you're depending upon which program you're following uh, through your cadetship or your of the watch license, uh, if you've got a full honors degree, then obviously uh, you can come into the course. But if you're solely coming on your professional qualification based on your COC, uh, it is highly recommended that you you have a management level COC, so at least uh, a chief mate or master or second engineer uh, or a chief engineer, and also have a management experience uh, in the rank uh, in the top four, as we call it at sea. That would be the bare minimum we would say is is acceptable for for seafarers. Um, but um, Nicola, I don't know if you want to add something. Yeah, that, that, that's the entry requirement for the master's programmes. If you have um, uh, less than that, less in terms of uh, COC and experience, um, all is not lost. You can apply and you could do um, what we would call a, a one plus one. You could do perhaps come for level six of the undergraduate degree, um, do that year and then uh, do your master's after that so it's a kind of one plus one we we, we would say um so you know that 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 is also a route um that's, you know i understand that that means two years out of work and you know two years as a student and that's that's a consideration for a professional person isn't it yeah and that's the maritime management purpose you're talking yeah. about yeah. Okay. Great. Um, We've got a question from uh, uh, from Aman. Can we get dependents along with us in the, for the course? Okay, so that is um, very much in the news at the moment. It's very much a political issue. Um, and the straight and simple answer is yes, this September. But that current scheme... Um, in the UK will end in January 2024. Okay, so uh, yes, I can say at the moment, um, but not long term with the current political. Um, but the, but as I say, it's political and politics changes. You know, so just as quick as that decision has been made, that decision may change in the future, but we have no internal control of that. Um, I noticed there was a question as well from uh, uh, Shashank. Um, hello, Shashank. Um, what about someone with an engineering degree? Always welcome. Okay, always welcome. My first degree is engineering. Right. I think is, what you essentially wants to ask is if he, a person has an engineering degree but has sailed at an operations level, um, uh, what's your suggestion? Uh, is it the right time for him, for the person to apply? 
I th- well, I, I never would say whether it's the right time for someone to apply, because I think that's a very personal. But with your engineering degree, um, that would be a, a route into the programme. OK, okay. Let's hear from JC Agnell on this. I yeah. So to background. add to that, because uh, like I uh, like have like I um, like have been an engineer like before joining this course, and uh, so what I'd suggest like I and what I have seen like I received uh, in fact three job offers while doing this course, and all of them were because uh, for the engineering background I believe like so you do have uh, although like I had uh, some management experience but. Uh, but it doesn't really matter because you have like a lot of uh, work like uh, goes on and uh, there is a skill shortage in uh, for the like the in the engineering and technical uh, specialization so you be the commercial and somebody like uh, through uh, in one of the event that we had in solent uh, during a maritime week that uh, we had so one recruiter told me that uh, uh, it's always uh, very desirable for them to find a candidate with a technical background and who has got a commercial degree as well, a business management. So I think it's very ideal. I don't know if it's the case now, um, but it used to be something that I always said. Um, if you looked at the uh, top 100 um, stock exchange countries listed on the London Stock Exchange, 60% of all directors had an engineering or technical background. Um, and what I've always said through my career is that you can, um, an engineer can go on to become anything, but not everyone can go on to become an engineer. Now, I know I've upset all of you deck officers, <laughs> including my boss, Canal, <laughs> so I'll pay for that. <laughs> but um, what I'm really saying is, um, yeah, we, we of course we recognise, uh, although we're teaching the, the business side of things, of course we recognise the um technical and engineering um and 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 actually that it's it's um enhancing skills different skills uh, I'm, I'm only joking when i pretend they're better skills um or am i no so the the next question i'll move to quickly is um Rit, ritwick uh sorry i didn't have my glasses on i'm i'm, I'm squinting there uh what about a bachelor's in nautical science yeah nautical science of course yeah you know also um appropriate it's a it's a it would be uh if it's a degree from a recognized institution um then the university would um of course welcome a nautical science degree it is also technical yeah. and specialist um you know that's that's fantastic yeah great um maybe two questions in thanks uh, yeah, go, go, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so to add to that, that uh, Southampton, like the uh, MCA, that's uh, Maritime and Coast Guard Agency, their headquarters uh, like is in Southampton. So which is a like a very, like a huge advantage, like when you are looking for a job, because they're always looking for um, people with a seafaring background, and then you have the technical qualifications. I mean, it's both the nautical and the uh, engineering. So it is it is a fantastic opportunity always to be close to the places which are close to your university and who has got a requirement for qualified people yeah th thanks jc that's a very important point that we have the maritime coast guard agency literally uh, it's kind of five minute walking uh, distance across the park that you see you saw in one of kunal's slides and also based in that building is the Marine Accident Investigation Branch. And we have um, graduates working uh, in both institutions. So we have very, as you can imagine, um, we have very close links with, with those institutions. Um, not just physical links, but, you know, um, shared common interests and shared uh, personnel backwards and forwards. Yeah. So that's that's really good. Lloyd's Register as well. Oh yeah, of course, yes, right. Lloyd's Register. Um, mm -hmm. There's two universities in Southampton. There's there are there is us and there's the other. And Lloyd's Register are based with the other university just up the road, um, working with their engineering campus uh, closely. Nice. nice. I think they are de-linking at the moment. De-linking. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay to be back independent again. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm just looking through the 
questions? Yes, we missed two questions. There's one question from Zia Hassan. Uh, what is the average age of the students for these courses? Wow, that's a very <laughs> difficult question to answer. So to actually give you a an accurate number is very difficult. And what you're really asking is, are all the students in their early 20s? Absolutely not. OK, so we do have some students who've come straight from an undergraduate programme. Um, but I would say that the majority of our students are probably in their 30s. So I'd say the average age is somewhere in the 30s. Um, but we have had uh, students as old as, or I shouldn't say as old because I am in my 50s, but we've had students, you know, in their 50s too. Um, age is not a barrier. Um, I, I, I think obviously for the investment you're making in your future, there's a kind of, you know, there's a, there's a time in your life when you think that that's, um, that's worth it. I think with our seafarers, it's often when they are at a particular point in their personal lives where they perhaps think, OK, been there, done that, master, been master, now got a family, wouldn't mind seeing my children a bit more often. I'd like to come ashore. And this is the process that I'll take. Um, but yeah, anything from, you know, it can, it can be anything. So I, I, I can't give an absolute accurate answer, but there is a range of ages and we benefit um from that um and, and as jc said before there is a lot of peer learning um and i would say as well we the lecturers uh very much as you would expect at master's level we very much like um, and we learn from our professional students that's that's how it should be at master's level education yeah just to add to that uh to, uh, to that nicola uh, and for the benefit of our audience, uh, I can tell you how much the exact average age is for across the school of Vosash, uh, because we've done that exercise and it comes to not very far from what you've said is 35 is the average age of a student at Vosash for the past few years, uh, which is not very surprising. So we get anywhere from 18 to, to 20s to, to 30s and 40s and and beyond uh, quite senior people coming in as well but yeah I would it's difficult to put the number age is not a barrier to education and learning and uh, yeah I'd, ideally if, you, if we want to put a number to it I would probably say late 20s to early 30s uh, is the right right uh, is the average sort of a thing Miss. Good to know. Um, I think there's one more question which we missed was from Aman Malhotra. Uh, he's asking about scholarships. Uh, and up, what are the scholarship options if a person has to do this course? Scholarships? Quite a challenging um, question. Quite a challenging answer. Um, so limited i would say if i'm going to be honest i would say there are limited opportunities um it it, it is quite difficult uh, some of the scholarship opportunities that the university might have they may have conditions on them like they have to be for uh somebody who is um, a UK applicant because that's what the external scholarship provider has said or they may be for people who've done an undergraduate and it's encouraging them or they're from a particular um, a particular background for example that's you know that they exist um, so that's a challenge that there, there may be external so not through the university but there may be um some scholarships or uh, charitable organizations um, that may be uh, local to you. I don't know of any. Um, there may be some that are specific for seafarers, you know, some, some particular funds. Um, but, but I wouldn't say that it's um, an easy thing to get scholarship for, for, for what you're uh, 
potentially planning on doing and I'm I'm always I'm brutally honest I'm always 100% honest because I you know I, I just don't want to um mislead or um give you an impre- a false impression so I, th- I would say it would be a challenge if I'm if I'm going to answer that truthfully yep sure understood um I think fees I'm can- oh, sorry I'm so- sorry uh, Captain Gaurav um but I think um what you're probably thinking of is is that fee in one go none of us can eat an elephant in one go can we so um uh, your fees um uh, actually some has to be paid up front that's part of the visa uh, c- condition which we have no control over um but but they they can be staged payments yeah okay. i think they can be broken down into two chunks i think yeah so um that that may be worth bearing in mind that 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 is um but one of those is um it is an upfront payment actually which is linked with the visa situation in order to get your visa the visa people want to be sure that you are able to support yourself and pay your fees that's that's one of the uh requirements and I guess the staggered payment is one of the things which is unique for UK universities, because if you apply for the ones in France or uh, possibly in Netherlands, uh, I know for a fact that 100% fees needs to be paid upfront. Uh, for UK, I guess it has to be 50% of the fees, and then you can uh, pay it in tranches. Yeah. Um, it's worth noting at this point, because um, I haven't had the opportunity to say this, we're very mindful that um, not everybody that comes to study at Solent is a millionaire, not everybody that works at Solent is a millionaire. Um, and so uh, what we did a number of years ago was we um, organised our teaching and it will be this way next year because I've already looked at and worked with timetabling on the um, timetable for next year. We've organised our teaching so that it's on two full days. Um, so JC will be able to, to let you know that they are tougher days because, but you know what, you're seafarers, so you can, you're used to hard work. So um, the teaching days are Tuesday and Thursday. Your student visa allows you to work up to 20 hours paid employment, any type of paid employment. Um, on top of that, you can also volunteer if you want to. But, you know, that's a, that's a different thing. I know JC does some some volunteering. Um, so uh, that's always worth knowing. And there is a lot of employment in the Solent area. Uh, you know uh, casual employment um part-time employment so um that's worth knowing um you know we're aware of that we're aware that many of our students um not only are working but have to work so um i think the way we've organized it is is aimed at at that and helping that um when we keep wednesday afternoons free because that's when all the uh all the sport is played that's when you know you'll be I don't know, sailing, playing cricket, playing in the American football team. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's that's something to bear in mind um, as well. Helps, helps, doesn't it? There's a supermarket chain in the UK that says every little helps. That's their, their marketing, um, you know. So yeah, I think that's true, isn't it? Every little helps. Uh, 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 on this note, question from you, JC. Uh, were you um, did you take up a you know part time job, uh, and what was your experience? If you if you would like to share. Yes, sure. So um, for the uh, like, let me start from the like the tuition fee uh, uh, point. So the tuition fee, the fifty percent was uh, for the visa uh, application. It was required, uh, and then. Uh, there is something called cash so which is a, a sponsorship letter from the university that is uh, required for like when we apply for the visa so that will be required and uh, like after that like the rest of the amount like rest 50 percent you can pay in uh, like i have paid in two installments and uh, i think most of the students did uh, like the similar thing and for uh, 
your like one year like the for the living expense uh, so that is that comes around uh, a little above 9000 pound so which comes around uh, something around nine and a half lakhs in indian uh, currency and uh, that's uh, that's what uh, like is your living expense that you need to show for uh, i lived in a student hall uh, and the student hall uh, so they have flexible payment uh, options so you can pay upfront or also you can pay in installments but they have some uh, i think some documentation requirement which you need to fill up and which they are very helpful like which is which is i found that okay so from the day one uh, the southampton has been like a very uh, it's a friendly place it's a like it's a also like a, a very student friendly place and it's also like there is support from everywhere from university there is a student hub and then you find like if you have like you will of course like you will have many questions because you are living in a country like in a new place but there are places within the university and also like outside the university so there are some organizations which uh, uh, like uh, me and some of our other classmates so we were introduced by the like the international uh, support uh, department uh, of the university so who uh, helps you to um, socialize to get to know the other students from maybe other universities or same universities and uh, then you get to exchange some informations many informations which are helpful for your day-to-day -day living and uh, so it's that and then for the part-time uh, work so i was working like i have worked for some time and uh, um, like okay so it depends on you and your like how you want to uh, like the work what is your uh, personal situation but yes i have worked uh, the part time sometime like not throughout but yes sometime it's not that difficult to get what i would say no i would say the local economy relies on the student workforce <laughs> Um, JC, just just something because um, yeah, thank you for for talking about the instalments for for accommodation and also the instalments for the for the other fifty percent of your fees. Um, for, just for clarity, um, it there there is no interest to pay on um, the instalment payments. It is just the flat fee. It's not um, subject to interest, is it? No, it's not. Yeah. There you go. So just 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 for clarity, um, questions like that matter now that we have interest rates of five percent. Um, I think in the past, it you know we 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 didn't we didn't, but there is no um, uh, interest on the instalments. It is it's just staged payments, which I think is is helpful. Yes, we got one last question from Aman, uh, and that's for JC. If we could uh, open a bank account in the UK. On a student visa uh, yes uh, i mean like we can we need to basically because there are many places that i came with a forex card but the forex card doesn't work online or the many places like you cannot uh, for like you cannot like for the bus uh, for the public transport if you are using then it's better like you have uh, like a local bank account otherwise like it's always like you know fluctuating exchange rate and uh, it's not very convenient. So uh, yes, we, you can open a bank account. Um, I opened with uh, with Lloyd's Bank, which is quite renowned, and uh, they have. Uh, but there are many uh, bank accounts and university, the campus, which is very close to the high street, which is the city center. So you can uh, just uh, like even if you need some documents, so you can like just. Uh, get it from the university and uh, the submit uh, them so you can open a bank account what you cannot have is a credit card so the credit card on a student visa because there is a um, credit rating i believe like the that you need to uh, have which takes time to gener get generated so you cannot have uh, a credit card but you yeah surely can have a bank account and you will need to and yeah and debit card that goes with it obviously because of most is hardly for the benefit of for for uh, our indian audience here is there's hardly any cash in use in in uk uh everything is card based and everything is almost everything is contactless now so. yes most of the places so your forex card might not work in all the places like for it will support you for the few initial few days but you will eventually need to have a debit card and of the local bank Right, I guess we'll take one final last poll uh, question, Tejal, if you can take uh, that one and uh, then we could end this webinar. Yeah, I've shared. 
Okay. Yeah. Let me know once you're finished with it or once the persons have answered, I can't see the poll. Yeah. Oh, I'm nervous watching this poll with those questions. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Next year, I'm not sure. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, I, um, so, yeah, thanks, uh, Nicola, Konal, uh, and uh, JC for your uh, time. Really appreciate you spending a weekend. Uh, you know, that's typically family time everywhere, and then you spend it uh, uh, and then delivering this webinar. Thank you so much. And thanks for all the participants as well. Uh, you know, um, Saturday afternoon in India and uh, it's probably evening now and uh, you know so so you've come over here you've stayed for a hour and a half uh, and more and uh, so so thank you so much everyone for uh, for for presenting and attending the webinar we Dr. will Gora, sorry just before we go because I know that people will drop out as soon as you say you know good um good good evening um do you want uh a uh do you want me to post my contact email in the chat or will um, will any queries, any future queries, do you want those to come through you and you have my um, contact? Yeah, um, what we can do is we can share the queries with you and there are some which we could also possibly answer. And um, so, okay. so we could filter those out and, uh, you know, help and maybe just support you in, the, in, in this. Okay, I'm, I've just, when I noticed that there was um, thoughts for next year, I'm, I'm just very happy and I'll come back again next year or, or, or you know, beforehand. Um, I'm just very conscious that there may be um, further questions that I'm happy to answer. Okay, thank you. Sorry I interrupted. And then um, I'll go and interrupt once more. Uh, is just to say thank you to you as well, Gaurav, uh, for, and to Jalam for, for organizing this. I know there's a lot of work which goes in the background to get this organized in, in uh, ship shape, as we call it. Yes, thank you. Right. No, yeah, yeah thanks, thanks, everyone. I guess we'll do the next uh, webinar. I mean, for the next batch, maybe a little earlier, maybe sometime in January or so is a little better wherein people are able to then you know, have enough Plans. for them to decide. Uh, uh, yeah, that would be fantastic. I look right. forward to it. Right then. Um, yeah. Thanks. Thanks again, everyone, for your time. And uh, um, Tejal has shared the contact details. She has shared the email ID, the phone numbers. Uh, you know, website wherein you can have your queries come to us. Um, or whatever queries, since we have been doing this for a couple of years we might be able to resolve your queries. If not, then, um, you know, of course, uh, Kunal, Nicola, and, and uh, you know, Ravi, they, they are uh, accessible and we can always take inputs from them as well. Um, yeah, thanks, Vanage. Uh, Thank again, you. Everyone. Thank you. Good Bye. evening, everyone. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Take care. Thank you.